you do want to make sure your belts are where you need them because we're gonna put those on as we go here. So I'm working on this golf cart. We got it all painted up, but the engine's not really running right. So I ordered a new uh, crankshaft seal kit and I'm working on replacing that right now. I think that'll help make it run better and hold an idle. I'll show you a little bit about what I'm doing. This isn't a complete instructional on that, but you'll be able to at least see what's going on. To get started, we wanna take this off. We're gonna use this 22 millimeter socket and an impact, just like that. Now, I have this tool. They say that you need this to get it off. I personally have gotten this off before without it, but I bought the tool I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna drive it in until it pops off. Just like that. And that releases the entire assembly. There is no need at all to separate out this clutch, this assembly. You do not need to remove any of this in order to do this. This will all come off as one. The clutch, will likely want to separate because there's nothing holding this part on. So this will come off. That's okay. What you do not want to do is take the snap ring off of here and separate all of this. You do not need to do that, so don't do that. Then all you're gonna do is slide this off, pull the belts out of the way, and then I'll show you once we're down to that seal. To do this job, you need to remove the clutch assembly, the belt, the oil pump, and the belt for the electric start slash alternator. So I've done that. I've already taken the seal out. It wasn't in too bad a shape. This hole here is because I pounded a screwdriver in to pop it out. Overall, I've only been like five minutes into this job. So I'll show you kind of putting the new seal in and then uh, putting everything back together. This is the new seal kit. It comes with one for both sides. So right now I'm doing the clutch side. So that's this guy right here. We can see when we compare that to the other one, they are the same. And the only thing to be careful of when you're putting this back on, you wanna make sure it's going in exactly straight. If it's not going straight and it gets a little bit crooked, it'll actually mess up the sealing surface and you will wreck this completely and you might as well start back over. So we're gonna be very careful. Normally you would use a seal driving kit. I'm going to be using a block of wood. So before we stick this on, we want to just get the surfaces a little bit oiled up. It doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. I'm going to use two cycle engine oil, but that is not critical as long as it's just lubricated. You just want that to help it slide. You want to do the inside and the outside. And I've cleaned this already, but I'm going to put some on the shaft just to help. And I'll also put some on the inside race, also just to help. And then, we just want to slide this guy on. I'm just using a regular scrap piece of wood and a hammer. Normally I want to use my Thor hammer for everything, but for this, I do not, because I want to be able to control the tap. So I'm going to tap it, feel where the next part is that is not in, and then tap that part. So I can feel this bottom edge. The top edge is good. The bottom edge here is just out a little bit still. So again, nice even taps. So now the top edge needs to go. I felt that move just a little bit. So over here still, now this edge here. And again, you want to just keep working it evenly. Just light taps all the way around. You'll feel it pop each time. So that side popped a little bit. Now this side needs to pop a little bit. I'm just feeling how far it is on the lip so that I get, get it to go in evenly. We're getting close. So now that it's basically in, I just want to make sure all of it is nice and flush. So now when it gets in, it'll just hit flush with this surface, and that's when you know it's in all the way. 
So you can hit it a little bit harder when you're just doing the last couple taps in. We just want to make sure it's sealed good and tight so we don't get any leaks. So there, that is on. You just got to put all this back together. Now these are all different lengths and different sizes. The two skinny long ones went here, the skinny short one went here, and the fat one went right there. The other video that I watched for this, the guy pulled this apart and he pulled the snap ring out of here and pulled this all apart. You do not need to do that. You do need to pull the bolt off, which will allow this to just pop out easily. That's all you have to do. The rest of this can stay together and this gear right here drives the oil pump inside here. So when you put this back together, you want to just kind of turn it until the gear locks in. There's no keyway or anything. This is simply a friction fit. It's called a taper lock and that will hold it onto the crankshaft. You do want to make sure your belts are where you need them because we're going to put those on as we go here. You can see I got that belt on and then this one should go pretty easily like that. And then if we do this right, It'll fit onto there, and then, just like that. So these little guys here, these are guides for the clutch, and they go into these little races here, and it should just slide right in. These pop out as you pick up speed, and that's what pushes the clutch in, so they need to spin freely. You also need to get these teeth here to line up. So it might only go one way. If it doesn't go the one way, rotate it until the next ones line up. There we go. So you saw that was nice and tight. Now we've got this guy and this has this lock here. You want to make sure that's in place when you tighten it down. I am using air tools because they're awesome. This guy is a 22 millimeter socket. So that's how you do the crankshaft seal. I'm gonna give it a test run on this side just because I wanna see how that works. I probably need to do the other side, but since it's all together now anyway, might as well give it a test run, see if that fixed it, and then move on to the other side if that's required. I'm hooking up the fuel tank again and strapping it down because I will not need to access this side anymore. I had adjusted the carb before, so I'm gonna adjust it back, but I'm gonna count where I was at by counting the turns. So that's half, one, half, two. So about two turns, so that's actually not bad. Normally you wanna be one and a half to two turns. So I'm gonna go half, one, and a half, two. So I'm gonna leave it back where it was at for my test ride. Let's see if it runs any different. So it doesn't seem to run any different. So I'm gonna do the other side now and I'm also gonna check the reeds just to see how they're looking. I'm probably gonna check the reeds first. So checking the reeds is actually pretty easy. There's four 10 millimeter bolts on here. You just wanna thread them out and we're trying to get to right here. So once you've cracked them loose, then they'll come out pretty easily by hand. Now I've done the compression test on this. It's running at about 100 to 105 which is slightly on the low side. So it probably could use a top end rebuild as well. But for now, I just wanna make sure all the auxiliary systems are working okay. I've already cleaned the carburetor and it is still the factory original carb. A lot of guys look on eBay and grab the Chinese knockoff carbs. You'll find those don't work nearly as good as an original cleaned factory carb. Okay. Right off the bat, I notice gasoline is flooding in here. And here are my reeds. So the reeds are just these little metal things underneath here. And what they'll do, as the intake stroke happens, they open. And as the exhaust stroke happens, they open. I don't know what this is all about, why this is bent down. My guess is somebody tried to do some tuning of some sort. So I'm gonna bend it back up just because I can. Everything else seems okay. Basically what I want to make sure of is that these are sealing. So you can see those are tight there and that's tight there. That's very important that they're tight 
and that they're not curling up. These are not curling up, so I'm gonna say that the reeds are okay, but I do wanna make sure that they can open up all the way, so I'm gonna just bend that up to be the same as that one. And because I don't want to damage the reed itself, so I don't wanna stick something in there and pry on it, so I'm gonna take these screws out and pull the reed stoppers right off. Normally, you would not be pulling these screws out over top of the engine, but I don't wanna move the camera, so I'm gonna try and not drop them. You can see, that's the reed stopper, and here is the reed. So they would normally have a bit of a curve to them. That allows them to snap closed and seal. So we do not want to do any damage to them. There is a little bit of varnishing on here, which I'll clean off so that they can seal really well. We'll do both sides, even though only one side matters for the sealing surface. Without these sealing well, what'll happen is you'll actually lose compression because these need to be sealed while you're on the compression stroke. And if they're not, then you got a problem. I'm also going to, since I got this off, make sure that this surface is clean. While I'm here, I might as well do the other one too. This is now clean and I'm gonna reinstall it. 